So for the timeline here, I'm going to show you how to add the D-Link camera as a generic model to our service. The steps should be very similar for most D-Link models. The first thing you're going to want to do is log into your account. You should be brought to the timeline, which we see here by default. If you don't have any cameras added to your account yet, you'll see let's add a camera as a button. If you do have cameras, you'll see add a camera. Let's go ahead and click on that. So from here, I'm going to choose a generic MJPEG. We've checked the camera documentation and know that the model supports that type of video compression. So I'll name my camera. H.264 is another compression option. Uh, so you need to want to make sure that you check your camera documentation. We'll click Next. Here we'll put in our username and password and the port that we forwarded on the router and click Next. Okay, so I'm presented here with my FTP credentials, which I'm going to need to manually input in the camera by logging into the camera interface through its IP address. We'll go ahead and click Finish. And we can also get the FTP credentials afterwards by clicking on the drop down arrow and getting the FTP info here. The next step in the setup process is going to be logging into the camera. And once again, you can check your camera documentation to figure out how to do this. Once you've logged in, you'll need to click Setup along the top and then find Event Setup on the left. So we'll click Setup. We're looking for Event Setup. Now, depending on the camera model that you have, it may not be labeled Event Setup. So you're looking for some variation of Event Setup here. We're going to click on that. Now, for the purposes of this exercise, we've already created these events. So what you're going to be doing when you create them for the first time is clicking Add. What we're going to do is click on these previously created events for this scenario. And right here we have the FTP settings that we've gotten from our FTP settings that we talked about previously in this video. We'll click Passive Mode here, and there is no remote folder name, so we'll just leave that backslash in there. And click Save Settings. And you have to name it, of course. Click Save Settings there. And next, you're going to set up the media. So again, you're clicking Add. I'm clicking Cloud. So media here, we're choosing video clip. But here's where you choose between whether or not you want to upload images or video clips. So we've chosen video clip, and we click Save Settings. And here we have the event. So again, you're clicking Add. I'm clicking Cloud. And again, we've named the event Cloud. We've enabled the event. We've set the priority for the event to highest. And again, the trigger is going to be video motion detection. That's very important. Um, so anytime there's motion detection detected by the camera, that is going to be uploaded to the service. The schedule is set to always. And the action is the previously created cloud action. And we're clicking Save Settings there. And the last thing we're going to need to check is we're going to have to set the motion detection area on the camera. And this is extremely important. So I'm clicking motion detection. And I've already created the motion detection. But what you're going to do is click enable motion detection. And then you're going to choose your motion detection area. You can click on different areas with your mouse cursor to select what you want to avoid and what you want to add as motion detection area. Or you can select all or you can clear all and redo it if you'd like. So after you've done that, you're clicking Save Settings. And uh, the sensitivity can be pretty important. Uh, this sensitivity uh, is, is fully dependent on what's being seen in the image. So again, uh, things that uh, you want to be less sensitive, maybe you want to lower the sensitivity, and more sensitive, you're going to increase the sensitivity depending on where the camera is located. So again, we're clicking Save Settings. And that should be it. If you have further questions, contact our support team and they'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.